Welcome to Manufacturing Processes, Machining and Machine Tools Lectures by Prof. Joy G. Tughosh. This is the 11th lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on slaughter and planer machine. He will be discussing functioning of a slaughter machine, comparison of shaper and slaughter, specification of slaughter machine, operations that can be performed on a slaughter machine, functioning of a planer machine. Types of planar machines, components of a planar machine, planar size, work holding, planar drive mechanism, planar feed mechanism, comparison of shapers and planers and planar operations. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access my videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we will be discussing the slaughter machine and the planner machine. So let's start. Slaughter machine just like a shaper machine works just like a shaper machine and does job similar which is which is done on a shaper machine and therefore it is also referred to as a vertical shaper. Slaughter, slaughter machine was invented much before shaper machine was invented. It was invented by a person called Brunner in the year 1800. So the major differences between a shaper and a slaughter is that in a slaughter machine uh, you have a rotary table. And because we have a rotary table, a rotary field can be given. So a circular surface can be machined compared to that of a shaper machine, which is not possible in a shaper machine. And the ram here travels in a vertical plane. <coughs> so the ram moves up and down. So downward stroke is the cutting stroke and upward stroke is the return stroke. And like shaper, the upward stroke has to return fast to reduce the non uh, productive time and therefore here also we use a quick return mechanism. It can be Whitworth quick return mechanism or it can be uh, crank and slotted link Whitworth mechanism. Crank and slotted link mechanism. So I will show you the picture in the next slide. And shaper machine unlike uh, slaughter machine unlike shaper machine can cut internal surfaces also provided the tool and the hole is enough to accommodate the uh, the tool to enter the workpiece. It is used for cutting flat, machine flat surfaces, particles, inclined, etc., etc. It is also used for cutting keyways and making slots, both internal and external surfaces. So these are some of the differences between shaper and slaughter. This is a slaughter machine. You can see this is the circular table, and we can give a circular feed. So this is the ram which reciprocates. And uh, it also uses uh, during the downward stroke it cuts, during upward stroke it does not cut. Now since the weight is coming down, there is a counterbalance added uh, to the slaughter machine which is not there in a shaper machine. I will show you a picture of a slaughter which have, this is the counterweight. So this ram comes down along with the tool and this is circular table here. So circular, some of the differences between shaper and slaughter are that. Uh, Shaper is horizontal, slaughter is the ram travels vertical in a slaughter. Shaper has a rectangular type of table, whereas there is a circular table in case of a slaughter. And because there is a circular table, circular feed can be given and circular surfaces can be missing. And because of the nature of the working of the ram here moving up and down, so here internal surfaces can be missing which is not possible in a shaper machine. In a slaughter machine, there is a counterweight to balance the weight moving of um, moving <coughs> down of the ram. So these are the difference between a shaper and a slaughter. So this is the quick return mechanism. You can see this is the connecting rod. Sorry, this is slotted link. And this is the crank pin. This is the block fitted in the slot of the this rocker arm. And this is the radius light, this is bull gear, this is the pinion gear. The size of a slaughter is specified with the maximum length of stroke, the height between the table and the tool head, the maximum longitudinal feed, the maximum transverse feed, the diameter of the table. These are the things that is 
I'm going to specify a slaughter machine. What are the operations that can be performed in a slaughter machine is that it can machine flat surfaces, external, internal, vertical, <coughs> etc. etc. And it can machine circular surfaces also using rotary table. It can machine slots, QS groups. These are the some of the operations that can be performed on a slaughter machines. With this, we move on to the planar machine. Planar uh, <coughs> also is used to uh, make surfaces flat. So it generates flat surfaces or machines flat surfaces, uh, both vertical and horizontal and maybe inclined also. But there are some differences between the working of a shaper machine and a planar machine. Planar machine is a production type machine intended for um, accurate machining of surfaces on large surface. So some of the typical application of shaper machine may be machine bed, machining of machine bed columns, uh, marine diesel engine blocks, bending plates, etc. etc. So this typical diagram shows a double housing planer. We'll see what is a double housing planer. So this is a double housing planer installed in our shop. This is the table which reciprocates on this bed and this is the cross rail, this is the rail head, this is the housing, this is the housing rod, this is trip dog, this is trip dog in lever, reversing lever, uh, this is a table, this is a T slots, and there is T slots in this T slots, this, these are two trip dogs that can be fitted. So this distance between these two, two trip dog determines the length of stroke. So you can change it according to your requirement. You can increase it or you can decrease it as is required. So what are the different types of planner? You can have double housing planner. That means there are two housing on both sides of the bed. And on this type of uh, planner can support and use different types of tool heads and multiple cards can be taken. So open side planner. In open slided planner, uh, there is only one housing. So this allows for a uh, larger breadth of the workpiece that can be accommodated in the um, planner. And pit planer. This is particularly for large length workpieces. Here the table does not reciprocate, rather the rail there is a rail which reciprocates over the uh, workpiece. And divided table. So this is particularly a high production machine where there are two tables. Uh, so both table can move independently and here in one of the table the workpiece is being machined in the other table the workpiece is workpiece are mounted so once the mounting is over and other is over they can interchange so this saves time so actually work holding in a planner is a time taking process because you have to uh, tightly and rigidly hold the workpiece on the planner because the work carrying the table carrying the work reciprocates so if there is uh, not properly held then accidents may happen so work holding is very very tedious in planner machine so this is the double housing planner you can see this is the bed this is the table these are the housings housings on both sides so it is called a double housing planner and there are rail heads these are called these are called rail heads and these are called side heads so four tools are there and these four tools can simultaneously take cuts so <coughs> and here this table uh, the size of the bed is almost twice the size of the table or the length of the table rather. The length of the bed is almost twice the length of the table because the table reciprocates on the bed. And there are tip dogs. Uh, this is tip dogs and this is reversing lever. So at the end of the stroke it will strike and the, the lever will change the belts and the direction of the movement of the table will change. So these are tip dogs. So this is the feed mechanism. This is a feed disc. Uh, which drives the uh, this thing this uh, screw and this will move according to the requirement okay there is a rack here number 20 please identify this table rack so the mechanism is ultimately fitted to this whatever mechanism we are using that transmits the motion to this rack and this rack causes the table to reciprocate the rotary motion is converted into linear motion by rack and pinion arrangement. So this rack converts the rotary motion into a linear motion. And how the quick return mechanism is achieved, we will see how the quick return mechanism is achieved. These are the major components of a uh, planar machine. Planar size 
in a size is specified the largest rectangular solid that can be reciprocated under the tool. So it varies slightly from double housing planar to open sided planar depending on what we are specifying. So you can go through it. Work holding, work holding is very very important in a planar machine and in a planar we do not use vices rather we directly mount the workpiece on the table. There are T slots provided on the table and the work pieces are held rigidly and tightly so that it should not move during the reciprocations. So you have to understand that the large size work piece are held on the table and are reciprocated. So <clears throat> the momentum is quite high. So if it is not rigidly held, accidents may happen. So work holding is very, very important in planar machine. Okay, with this we move on to the planar drive mechanism. So again, just like uh, how I teach uh, mechanisms, here I will explain the working uh, construction first and then I will explain the working. So as I point out the components, you try to identify the components in the figure. So note that there is a loose pulley 1 and, and tight pulley 2. Tight pulley 2 means on the shaft 2, on the shaft 3, 2 is mounted. So if 2 rotates, 3 rotates or if 3 rotates, 2 rotates. And if 3 rotates or 2 rotates, it does not have any impact on 1. And on the same shaft 3, there are other 2 pulleys. Pulley 4 and pulley 5 are also mounted. Okay. Now, and the pulley 4, smaller pulley 4, so 4 and 5 are different in diameter. And pulley 4 is small and pulley 5 is larger. This is by design. This is not by chance. So it is intentionally made smaller and pulley 4 messes with another pulley 11 which is fixed here which is a fixed pulley on shaft uh, 22 on shaft 22 11 is fixed. So <coughs> power is transmitted from pulley 4 to pulley 11 using a cross belt drive using a cross belt drive in the current position and pulley 5 is fixed on shaft 3 is connected to a pulley 9 which is loose running loose on shaft 22 which is running loose on shaft 22 but there are other two pulleys in this shaft 22 pulley number 10 which is the fixed pulley which is a fixed pulley and pulley number 12 which is a loose pulley okay now 22 the shaft 22 is connected to the rack 15 in the previous figure I have shown you in the construction of planar there is a rack below the bed. So this 15 is connected to 14 here. So and is the gear train. So the power the motion of this shaft 22 is ultimately transmitted to 14 and 14 drives the uh, table using the pinion uh, so rack 15. So linear rotary motion of the 14 is converted linear motion of the rack 15 at the table 19. So there is a uh, trip dog 18 and a lever that is <coughs> belt shifting lever uh, 17. So this is the components. Now let's see the working. So here currently let's say the power from the motor is transmitted to the shaft 2 which is fixed on the shaft 3. Now you can shift it here and you can stop the machine. So once the machine when the belt is in 2 the machine is running. So you can stop and start the machine by shifting the belt. Now let's say the belt is in 2 and step 3 is rotating. So when step 3 is rotating, 4 and 5 are rotating. Now when 4 is rotating, the power is transmitted to the step 11. So step, sorry, yes, pulley 11 and the pulley 11 rotates, which in turn rotates the uh, step 22 and it drives the rack 15 ultimately. The step, it is forward stroke is taking place. So forward stroke is taking place. At the end of the forward stroke, at the end of the forward stroke, this trip dog is set and it strikes the bell shifting lever. Once it strikes the bell shifting lever, this is the bell shifting lever. So it will shift the belt. So the belt will now, at the end of the stroke, forward stroke, the belt will shift from uh, first pulley 11 to loose pulley 12 and from loose pulley 9 to first pulley 10. Now it is a cross belt drive and it is an open belt drive. Obviously the direction of rotation will be different. Now 
the power will not be transmitted from 4 rather the power will be transmitted from 5 to the first bullet 10 and it will move in a reverse direction. So return stroke will take place. So this is how uh, the planar uh, drive mechanism actually works. Now how this is a quick return mechanism. Now during the forward stroke you want maximum power and less speed. So therefore you are using a cross belt drive because the contact area between the belt and the pulley is maximum. So maximum power is transmitted and less speed. <coughs> Whereas uh, in a and see here from small pulley to large pulley so less speed. Whereas in a from large pulley to small pulley the speed is high and is open belt drive. So here less power and more speed. So during the return stroke it returns faster. So this is how uh, the quick return mechanism works in this type of mechanism. So it is not necessary, this is one of the mechanism of a planar, it is not necessary that all planars will have this mechanism. This is one of the mechanism that uh, is implemented on certain types of planars. There are other mechanisms also which can be implemented in a planar. Okay, the feed mechanism. Okay, now one more thing here I want you to know that as this is rotating, there is a number 16 which is called the uh, feed disc. Number 16 which is called the feed disc. Notice this, this is very important. Number 16 which is connected to the SAF 23. This is SAF 23. So let us come back to this figure. I'll come back to this figure. So here this is SAF 23 that is SAF, it is indicated here by 5 that shaft 23 is shaft 5 here. Now here the power for feed mechanism is transmitted by a flexible coupling mechanism. Now this flexible coupling mechanism is achieved by a flange. There is a flange which is inserted into a rotary disc, the whole rotary circular hole in this, this disc is inserted, this flange is inserted and there is rubber padding here. So what happens during one half of the rotation, it transmits the power and drives the uh, cross feed screw and in the other half during the return stroke, it, part of the return stroke, it drives the uh, cross feed screw and the rest of the time it remains inactive and does not trans trans uh, transmit any power, rather it slips over the leather um, padding. So here you can see the branch 4. It's connected to the shaft 23 in the previous slide, here it is 5 and uh, it is connected by two bolts here, number 4, number 2 and 16 is the this block 16, this is the fit disc, this is the fit disc which I have shown you in the previous diagram, this, this is the fit disc, same disc is shown here and on top of this there is a little side on which this uh, block is mounted, block 1 is mounted, this block 1 is connected to a connecting rod 15. It is connected to a connecting rod 15 which is connected to a rack 14 and rack 14 messes with another shaft, uh, another gear which is uh, gear number, uh, this is the uh, gear on which it is messes, this gear, it messes, rack messes with this gear. On this gear that is mounted on a shaft 12, on this same shaft gear 9 is mounted and gear 10 is mounted. 10 is running loose on this shaft and uh, gear 9 is fixed. So if shaft 12 rotates, gear, uh, gear 9 rotates and it does not transmit motion to the uh, gear 10. So in this gear 10, there is a double sided pole is fitted. This is called double pole. We can insert in, in, in any this side or this side in the um, gear teeth 9, in any of the gear teeth 9. Now let's see what happens. This is the forward stroke. During the forward stroke, it will rotate in this direction. So the power from here, so this will, the power is being transmitted. So this will also rotate. So as this rotates by friction between the pad and this flange, the power will be transmitted to the disc and this will rotate here in this direction. So as it comes down, <coughs> now here as it comes down, the connecting rod will come down. So this rack will come down. And we will fit this hand let's say here so this will rotate in if this comes down so this will rotate in in this direction and this hand is put here fixed here the left hand is slide, slided inside this here so when it comes down this slides and no movement is transferred to the gear 11 however 
and the rest of the time it is, it is stopped by after a period of rotation it is stopped by a stopper 7 fixed pin 7 now at the end of the return stroke forward stroke it returns so it returns to the direction changes when the direction changes it returns in reverse direction in reverse direction the crank it will move up and this rack will move up when it move up the gear 9 will give a positive motion to the gear 11 through the all 10 as a result this shaft 3 uh, shaft 4 will move because it messes and cross feed will be given so this is how it works the planar feed mechanism works in a planar so this is one of the mechanism not necessarily that all planar machine will be using this feed mechanism this is one of the feed mechanism which can be implemented in a uh, planar so comparison of separate and planar the planar is specially adapted for large work separate can do only small work planar uh, the work is moved against the stationary tool on separate the tool moves across the work which is stationary on planar tool is fed to the work and on separate the work is fed to the tool the drive on the planar is either by gears or by hydraulic machines the separate ram can also be driven in this manner but many a times a quick return mechanism is used most planar differ from separate is that they approach a more constant cutting velocity in planar, the tool is rigidly supported and the work moves on precision guide wheels. So this gives much more accuracy in comparison with Sepper, where there is a cantilever uh, thing happens and there is overhanging happens. So accuracy is compromised and surface finish is compromised. So multiple tool can cut in a Sepper in a planar, which is not possible in a uh, Sepper machine. In planar work setting requires skill and time, whereas Sepper work setting is very, very easy. Tool used in planar, of course, will be much more robust because the work we are using is larger. Of course, the planar machine is much heavier and costlier than SEPA machine. So, these are the some of the comparison between SEPA and planar, which is very often asked in the examination. So, you can write these comparisons. And what are the different operations that can be performed on a planar machine? You can machine horizontals just like SEPA. All this uh, operation that can be performed in a SEPA machine can also be performed on a planar machine, but the accuracy is high and the work piece are uh, much larger compared to that what we do in SEPA machine. So this is all about slaughter and planner. I hope uh, you have uh, liked this lecture. Thank you for watching.